What's going on guys, Adam again, back with Atomic Garage and today you are sitting again in the engine bay and I'm going to explain why you need to make sure you have some silicone gasket with you at all times, coming up in this video. Yes guys, as the intro just stated, you need to make sure that you keep some silicone gasket with you at all times. And why is that you may ask? I don't know if you remember, but a few months ago, I did a video where I replaced the valve cover gasket. Look at this. Guess what we're doing again? Yes, the good old valve cover gasket. And the reason why I have to do it, because most of this valve cover sealed up good, but that last 5% somehow didn't seal. And it was because I was too lazy to run to the store, I was aggravated, and I didn't use any fippage, silicone sealant, gasket maker, whatever you want to call it. I didn't use it. I just put the gasket on dry and prayed for the best. So let me show you what we got going on. Excuse the wind guys, but it's a beautiful day out here today in South Kakalak. But this is the valve cover that's been already removed. And this is the top of the engine with the camshafts, both intake and exhaust. And actually everything looks extremely nice nothing looks worn out there's no metal shavings and little crevices and things like that also if you look down inside of each spark plug tube there is no oil in there so that part is good but the problem child that we have is this back spot right back here see a little bit of oil was getting through and it was wet and of course hot engine plus oil equals smoky smoke and it was smoking you wouldn't, you couldn't see the smoke, but you can only smell it just faintly and only at certain times. But there became a point that it came a little nauseating. So one day I drove the car up on my ramp, slid up under it, and that was the only spot I could find, which was this back here. So I have to now fix this thing and do this all over again. So we're gonna do it right this time. Yep, guys, that explains it. I am not too big to say that I made a mistake. And you know what? It What upsets me more than anything is that, you know, as mechanics or as do-it-yourselfers, whatever you want to call yourself, a lot of times we have rules that we set in a place for ourselves. Certain things that it works every time you do it. Every time you do it, it works. It never gives you a problem. That then becomes your code. Now in this situation, I believe in Fippage, form and place ga uh, gasket, silicone gasket, all of that good stuff. I believe in using it, not overusing it because some of those particles can get inside of your engine and then we're having a whole nother story. Not plastering it on like you're trying to seal in dry rock or anything, but just a uniform, even recommended layer of silicone gasket. And this is the one time, the one time that I deviated from my own rule. And I am paying the price because I have to redo the job again. And I hate that, but it's all right. So again, my rule, anytime I'm doing anything, even if it comes with a gasket, whether it's cork, whether it's the little plastic one, whatever it is, I still put a thin layer of silicone in certain areas in particular. And I'm gonna show you the areas that I usually, except for this one time, apply my silicone gasket. So the top places is where the timing cover meets the actual head. This right here, you can see there's a little gap. A lot of times there is a leak that comes from there. Now, as you see, there's no leak. It's pretty dry, just some dirt that's right there. But usually it'd be good to put some in that area. Also along this side as well, since it's the same thing. I would also usually try to put just a skim, skim coat maybe around it, depending on what kind of gasket that I am using. But definitely back here where these half moons are, that is definitely a place, definitely. And right on the edge as well, is where I would apply some of my silicone gasket. Because if I did that, this back one right here, it wouldn't be leaking and I wouldn't be doing this whole thing either. But I am slowly working on getting this car right and getting it to a point where I am ready to pull it, the trigger and take it to the car show. But before I forget, there's one thing that I truly do need the help of you guys. And that's this right here. So oh, guys, there's this little pillar that's right here and it's on both sides. While this side is on for the most part, it's, it's a little loose, but this side, all of the clips, rip clips have broken off. So I need 
to see how I can reattach these clips back on to the pillar. I have the pillar, it's in the back of the car, but I don't know how I would go about making this pillar connected again and look nice and neat. So if you guys have any ideas, please, in the comment section below, please tell me what I can do. It's probably something simple. I don't want to get new ones because I can't seem to find the gray cloth. And though I can get some gray cloth and rewrap it, BMW parts, it could be used and beaten and people want ridiculous amounts of money. And that goes against what I'm all about. There you have it guys, just a small video highlighting my mistakes and a tech tip of using silicone gasket maker. It is your friend, it is truly your friend. But that's gonna be it for me today guys. I'm going to continue plugging away on this car, finishing up the valve cover gasket, cleaning up that whole area and things like that because I am trying my hardest to get this car to the car show. And this is my first time that I am bringing my car to a car show and no, there's no awards, there's no competition besides like a burnout and I'm not about to embarrass myself with that. But this is my first time bringing a car to the car show my own car that I own and I want this to be a special occasion, a special event. And I keep pushing it back. I originally said uh, November, then I said December, I'm gonna try and make it. Then right now it's January, but I might push it back to February if I can get this car into paint. I am trying to slowly work on it while being very budget conscious. And I really want this car to really look good and just be one of a kind and unique, different from all the other E36s and E30s that you see on the road. If you guys have any ideas on how I can do that, I would greatly appreciate that. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. <clears throat>